well, I think I'm feeling pretty adventurous today, so let's do something fun. Hello guys, welcome, or if you've already been to my channel before, welcome back. I'm the Philadelphia Whovian, and for this video I said, okay, you know, I just want to do something fun and enjoyable from a really selfish thing, you know, reason for my own, you know, purposes. And I said, you know what, let me do a series of videos that are actually going to focus on marathon videos of classic monsters. When I say classic monsters from Doctor Who, what I mean is monsters that were began in do classic Doctor Who and then have also crossed over to modern New Who. So I feel like do a top 10 episodes for it, like top 10 Cybermen episodes, then a top 10 Dalek episodes, then top 10 Master episodes, then top 10 Ice Warrior episodes, and top 10 Great Intelligence episodes. And what qualifies for this video is or series of videos, now that I think about it, is simply that it has to be at least five stories of that monster from Classic and New Who for me to say, oh, okay, you know what, I'm going to do a video of it. So if there's not five stories with that one monster, I'm not going to be that inclined to do a list of it because I just don't think there are enough stories. That's all it is. So, without further ado, let's get into my top ten Cybermen stories of Classic and New Who. Coming at number 10. Oh, it gets controversial already. And I'm going to be very clear for you guys. There is no humanly possible way this video or any of my videos are going to be objectively pleasing. These are subjective. There is nothing about them that is going to feel like, oh, that's going to be my list too. No, no, no. My list, I admit, is always going to be completely different than yours. So, number 10 is kind of the proof of that. Starting at number 10, we have from series 6 of New Who, Closing Time. <gasps> Closing Time. Closing time. Oh god, this episode this gets so much hate. But here's the thing. Overall, I really do like it. The only thing I don't like is when they did the whole blow them up with the power of love thing. Damn, that's trope. It's a terrible trope. But I can't be too mad because, honestly, that's something that's not even, you know, characteristic of just New Who. That happened in Classic Who once as well. Blowing them up with the power of feelings. That just, that's happened before. I wish they did not do that in that way with the Cybermen the way they did it with Closing Time, but I like the Doctor, like Craig, like Stormageddon, like the whole bonding thing that was going on, and I like that it was like, you know, this is not an expensive story. And I feel like if this story came in series one, two, or three, or four of New Who, this would get a lot more slack. But because it happened in series six, part two, where people were kind of against everything, it was not going to get enough love. But outside of that one moment of the blow them up with the power of love, I like this story. Okay, now coming at number nine, the very first Cyberman story, The Tenth Planet. Okay, now with these Cybermen, they're not terrifying. Fine. I will admit it, they're not terrifying. But that's not why I watch this story. I watch this story to have the first Cybermen we've ever gotten, because these are the beginning. This is where the Cybermen were created, here. I have to respect that, and I do respect it. And the story is very good. I like the story of the Tenth Planet, and we get our first time of a regeneration. Ooh. Imagine what the world was going through when that happened. I wonder what but I'll never know. Never will. Okay, so number nine is the tenth planet. Coming at number eight. I do not have this story because it's so bloody expensive all the time. The sixth Doctor's Soul story, Attack of the Cybermen. Okay, this story, fine. It's not for everybody. I'll say right off the bat, it is not. It, um, it has, there's blood in it. But then again, there's blood in the Deadly Assassin and in the Serious Planet, so blood happens sometimes. God darn, get over it. But also, the Cybermen, oh, they are vicious, but they're Cybermen. You know, what do you, you, you want me to hate? This is a good story, all right? So if it's not for you, it's not for you. But for me, personally, I love Attack of the Cybermen. I like the Doctor and Perry in it. The Doctor realizes he can be wrong. This is an important thing for the Doctor to know about himself. It really is. And the Doctor can and will be wrong sometimes. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. And I like seeing the development of Perry from the Twin Dilemma and the, her relationship with the Doctor to Attack of the Cybermen. You see a distinct change. And I respect that. 
Okay, so now we have next one up. I think we are now at number seven, but I could be wrong or ready with that list. Silver Nemesis. Yeah, I like Silver Nemesis. I'm not going to apologize for liking Silver Nemesis. I'm not going to apologize for putting it high up on my list either. You know what? When I watch Doctor Who, I have one main priority. I want to have a ton of fun. And with Silver Nemesis, I do. The Doctor and Ace in this are absolutely amazing. And the, the Nemesis, I'm sorry, I think she's a very cool concept. And Lady Painfort. This actress gave it her all, and I respect that so much. She made bold choices, and they were really good. I absolutely loved it. I love the idea of the jazz going throughout the um, episodes. And when the jazz player you see, the um, saxophone player you see in the beginning, that music he's doing is the same one who did the music all throughout Silver Nemesis, and it was specifically written for Silver Nemesis. That music, that jazz music, was specifically written for this one episode. I love that. Yeah, Silver Nemesis. Oh, well, God. And I also am fine with the direction and the design of the Cybermen. And that fight at the end with Ace... I love that fight, that chase where the Cybermen are chasing her and she literally kills them all. I know that some people are like, oh god, Ace, she killed Cybermen just by, you know, shooting them in the chest with their, um, with some gold coins. But for me, it's like, you know what, the Cybermen back in the moon base, they got killed off very easily, um, just by shooting some liquid at their chest packs, you know, some household cleaning fluid. So, this to me is, it can happen. <laughs> I'm not, not that, that anal retentive about it. I just am not. So I, I understand why people do not like Silver Nemesis, but damn it, I really love Silver Nemesis. I'm sticking to that. Can you challenge me? Won't do any good. I just like it. Okay, so next one we have up, I think we're at number six, but I could be wrong. From the Twelfth Doctor's Era, The World Enough and Time. Ooh. When I saw this story, I was like, whoa, they made these Cybermen really scary. Moffat did a damn good job writing this story. I'm not, a, okay, people hate The Doctor Falls. While I admit it's not nearly as good as World Enough in Time, overall, I am fine with it. It's just not with the master thing, um, whatever. Sorry, but um, so I don't hate the Doctor Falls. I don't, but I see why people people do not like it. But World Enough in Time is just so awesome to me. The you know it's just so so very good, creepy, dark, but at the same time have enough brightness in it for me to enjoy it. Overall, World Enough in Time, pretty spiffing if I say for for myself. Then I think we're at number five now, I believe. Um, now we've got the fifth Doctor story, Earth Shock. Okay. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, this is pretty good, you know, I'm not too crazy about it. But then I went back and watched it again a second time, loved it a lot more. It is a very, very good story, but it's also a devastating one, with Adric dying. Now I know people hate Adric. I don't hate Adric, but I see why people do not like him. He's just there, he's fine for me, you know, I, I see why people think the Fifth Doctor's, um... TARDIS team is very crowded, but I'm okay with three companions. I've never been against it. Again, I understand your lack of love for Adric, but whether you love him or hate him, you gotta admit, when he died, whoo, that hits you in the gut, and it stayed there. It hits you in the gut, and it stayed there. You know it did. Okay, so now, I think we're at number five. Now we have Tomb of the Cybermen. Okay, oftentimes this is like, I've seen this one get like number one for Cybermen stories. Guys, I do love this story. I really, really do. I just think it's number one because it's the only Cyberman story from the Second Doctor era that is complete. And as a result, it's the most accessible and it's also four-parter, so that gives a nice, good pace to it. Um, I overall do very much love Tomb of the Cybermen. I just wish the Cybermen were a little bit easier to understand and they did a better job of making them more clear. Um, with the machine they used. But once I, I get to watching a few times, um, at this point now, I do understand them completely. I just wish they did a little better job of making them always more discernible. And that could just be me being a personal thing. That's all it is. But I... No, I... Guys, I love the Cybermen. And I know this... I mean, sorry, I love Tomb of the Cybermen. And I know some people have a problem with Toberman, like, think, oh, yeah, he's black, or so kind of a, a racist or offensive, um position here to put him in the role of Toberman. 
I'll get to that one day later about why I'm not offended by that, and I believe Toberman was actually the ultimate hero at the end of the story, but I'll do that later. Now we're at number four, I think, or number three, you know, for probably four. Mm -hmm. So we have the moon base. Okay. No, I think we're number three. Yeah. This guy has to be my number three. Number three, the moon base. Okay. The moon base is not a complete story in the sense that two episodes are in fact missing. But I freaking love this story. I love that it takes place on the moon base. I love the Cybermen in it. I love the do situation that Dr. Ben, Polly, and Jamie find themselves in it as well. And Jamie's like, it's you, the Phantom Piper. And I'm like, oh, Jamie, I don't know what to go with you. Phantom Piper, leave me. Oh. And then Polly tends to him, and Polly discovers how to destroy this Cybermen in this one. And I love the music. Okay, the music they get for the Cybermen stories is so chilling. It's perfect. And as always, I love Patrick Troughton in it. I love Polly. I love Jamie. I love Ben. I love those three. They're wonderful to me. I'll always love Jamie. That's just the way it is. Um, I'm not ashamed of it. Okay. Now, for number two, we have the worst episode to have gotten lost. Or one of the worst ep not lost, I'm sorry, to have been taped over. Actually, all the Second Doctor era, it's horrible how it was taped over, so much of it was. But one, oh my gosh, I just do love it so very much. The Wheel in Space. This, I remember sitting there watching it on my computer with all the stills, because, like, so much of it's missing. You only get like, a couple moments where there's action, because the rest of it are just still camera shots and the dialogue is going over it and just in there being like this is such a good episode the doctor is amazing because it's patrick Troughton and jamie's amazing and then we get my favorite companions um with the second doctor and jamie we get zoe and there's something about zoe i just latched on to very quickly i can't control why i just did but oh my gosh just this story is just so perfect, I'm still upset they just did not keep it and save it. What can you do? And before I get to my number one pick, I'll give an honorable mention to Revenge of the Cybermen. Okay, this gets on some hated lists. Like, people think this story is crap. I understand why. After a so long of a time of doing Cybermen, literally, I think the Cybermen were not done until... Last time they were done was in the second vector era with the invasion. This would be a major disappointment. But you gotta understand, when I watched this story, I wasn't looking at it to compare it to the invasion. I didn't look at it, um, you know, having those high expectations. I just didn't. And because I did not, I still could enjoy the story for what it was. And the idea of gold, again, I like the idea of gold being able to cripple the Cybermen. And they're trying to get revenge. Cybermen are trying to get revenge because they lost to this species a long time ago. So, I, and also with recycling your environment. This took place on the same arc of the arc in space. And I think it's space, Ner space station Nerva. But it, it, they return to a different time than time they were supposed to return at. And I think it's a good recycling of space. So I see why people do not like this story. I see why this gets on so many hated lists. But because I wasn't going in with that expectations, I was able to still enjoy it. And you also have to remember, I started watching Doctor Who through New Who. And no offense, but they haven't had the best track record always when it comes to the Cybermen. So... Not my fault that my expectations are low, but I still do have fun with this story, and that's important. Do I have fun with stories? And now comes my number one pick. You know what it was. You better have known what it was. It's Invasion. The Second Doctor's Story Invasion. Again, with Jamie and Zoe. This is eight parts, and it is glorious. And even the animation, okay, I want to make it very clear. I gotta find out who animated this, because the animated um, episodes are perfect. Honestly, that is the best animation for the second Doctor I've ever 
scene, they did their best to not only create an atmosphere, whoever animated this, really, did a good job, not only with the atmosphere, but also getting Patrick Troughton's expressions down, and Jamie, Victor you know, Zo Zoe, not Victoria, Zoe, all of them, and the Brigadier, you can see the actors, you can see that whoever animated this did their best to really bring life to the actors and to the episode. The writing is absolutely perfect. This is an eight-parter that does not drag. It uses every single moment to absolute perfection. This was so good, and when I got this, even though it's a used copy and eventually now it's starting to skip, it's totally worth it. Invasion will probably always be my number one favorite Cyberman story. Unless some miracle were to happen in New Who, where they make a Cyberman story better than that. I just don't see that happening. But I'm keeping an open mind. One day it could possibly happen. So guys, that's my list for top 10 Cybermen stories for my, you know, series of classic and new who monsters. That, again, my next one will probably be the top 10 Dalek stories. Thank you guys so much for watching. What are your favorite Cyberman stories? Let's talk about it and enjoy it because god darn, we need something to enjoy right now. We really do. Yeah, we do. Bye guys.